in this section we'll talk about various other ways in which these proteins can be classified we have seen the classification of proteins on the basis of the structure now here we are talking of classification of proteins on the basis of what they are made up of so on the basis of composition now the proteins which are made up of only alpha amino acids they are called simple proteins simple proteins have only alpha amino acids what is an alpha amino acid an amino acid in which there is an alpha carbon alpha carbon is the one to which both the functional groups are attached that is amino as well as carboxyl group so if we break down a protein and all those uh, individual or uh, mono units that we get are only alpha amino acids that means this protein was made up of only those things such a protein is known as simple protein the example of simple protein can be albumin albumin like lactalbumin or ovalbumin albumin is a category under this we write various types of albumins so albumin which is found in eggs of vertebrates or organisms that is known as ovalbumin the albumin which is found in milk is known as lactalbumin so all these all these albumins they are simple proteins other example can be globulins globulins are also simple proteins that means when we hydrolyze these proteins we get only alpha amino acids the second category is when a protein is made up of a protein and something which is non protein then that one would be called conjugated protein so there has to be a protein plus some non protein part and on the basis of this non protein we would give the name to that particular protein for example if there is protein and nucleic acid so first example is protein plus nucleic acid like dna or rna and the protein is say for example histone protein then such a protein would be called nucleoprotein so here it means along with protein there is something else and here that something else is nucleic acid so there is histone protein dna wrapped around it which makes the chromatin fiber and we call it nucleoprotein similarly the other example is a protein and phosphorus or phosphoric acid attached to it then we would call that phosphoprotein phosphoprotein casein milk protein is the example of this phosphoprotein that is milk protein so depending upon what exactly is attached we can take one more example here let us write the third example mucoproteins so here there is protein plus a mucopolysaccharide these are present in saliva and one example is mucin mucin in saliva this these are conjugated proteins so along with protein that means the protein part which is made up of amino acids there is something else if it is a metallic ion we'll start calling it metalloprotein if there is a pigment like hemoglobin so there is iron containing part and globin so we call it metalloprotein or because of the color they can be called chromoprotein so fourth example that we can take is globin protein plus the iron part this is where we get the chromoprotein and one such example is hemoglobin where there is iron contain iron and a protein part so this is the second category that is conjugated proteins the third category that is the first one here sorry the first 
the first one that is simple protein conjugated and third one they are known as protein derivatives this is third category now protein derivatives are nothing else but they are considered as into uh, intermediate uh, molecules when a protein is being broken down when a protein is broken down we get smaller polypeptide chains like pep, uh, peptones or proteoses those are known as protein derivatives that means the parts or components which are derived from proteins so example would be peptones proteoses the ones which are formed by breakdown of a big protein molecule so these are intermediate uh, you can say molecules so large protein then these parts which are derived from proteins and finally it will be broken down into amino acid this is one classification the next classification this was the second one the next classification that we want to discuss is on the basis of functions so on the basis of functions now we have many proteins classified on this basis for example first category structural proteins the proteins which provide some kind of a structure or help in formation of some structure for example collagen elastin they help in formation of the tissues the fibrous tissues so here we'll take example of collagen elastin they come under structural proteins the second category storage proteins we have taken the example of albumin here the albumin is, which is found in the egg which we call the ovalbumin it is actually a reserve food material in the egg for the developing embryo so storage protein can be albumin enzymes most of the enzymes are also proteins then fourth hormones all hormones are not proteins but there are certain hormones which are purely proteins or they can be conjugated proteins for example we take insulin insulin is a protein which acts as hormone then immunoglobulins where the proteins help us getting immunity so those are called immunoglobulins and they help in providing immunity and that is why we call them immunoglobulins or igs there are various types of immunoglobulins so they provide us immunity against various kinds of antigens or pathogens next category clotting proteins the proteins which help in blood clotting clotting proteins for example fibrinogen fibrinogen is a soluble protein and it gets converted into insoluble fibrin which is again a protein and then it helps in blood clotting so we know that this is present it is a protein soluble and it's going to change into its insoluble form so fibrinogen prothrombin these are all proteins helping in blood clotting seventh function which we can talk of here is where the proteins are helping us in various other activities for example carrier if certain substances are to be transported across plasma membrane and a protein is just helping it to move or cross that membrane then we would call them carrier proteins for example in plasma membrane there are channel proteins aquaporins they are all carrier proteins they are helping things move or cross the plasma membrane through them even we can include sodium potassium pumps also in this category because they are integrated proteins but 
they help in transport of substances across them. There are few more functions which we will take up next. Let us add few more functions. There can be contractile proteins. Contractile proteins like actin, myosin, which are present in muscles and help in muscle contraction. One more function, but it is not a pure protein. It is a conjugated protein which is helping in something. We have taken the example of that in conjugated proteins when we were talking about and that protein is this one, hemoglobin. So though it is a conjugated protein, but it helps in transport of gases. So they are they help in transport of gases. So the example that we are talking about is hemoglobin, which is a conjugated protein. One more very important function of proteins is when they are again in the form of a conjugated protein and that is known as glycoprotein. When an oligosaccharide is attached to protein. So these glycoproteins, glycoprotein is oligosaccharide plus protein. They are found on the plasma membrane and they help in cell identification. And these are the same molecules which are kept under the group of major histocompatibility complexes. We write it as M major histocompatibility complex. Major histocompatibility complex. Now histo word is for tissue and compatibility means when they can work together. So this plays a very important role when we are talking of organ transplantation. So though they are conjugated protein, there is something associated along with protein, but they play a very, very important role. So when we talk of classification of proteins on the basis of functions, we include these conjugated proteins also. Now we have classified proteins on various categories. We can classify it one more uh, in one more way that is the shape. If they are, so this classification is on the basis of shape. If proteins are thread-like, then they would be called fibrous, like collagen and elastin. They are thread-like, so fibrous proteins. For example, Collagen, elastin, tubulin, all these are fibrous proteins. And if they are spherical, then they would be called globular proteins, in which we include globulins and all. So this is how we classify proteins using various criteria. So this is the last thing on the basis of which we can classify proteins. So we have studied the structure of proteins, various types of proteins and how we classify them on various criteria, including their structure that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary functions also. What are they made up of and shape also. In the next segment, we'll start with the next biomolecule.